Welcome friends. In this video, I'm installing an AIG air oil separator, flushing the coolant system and learning why a catch can may have been a better option. Inside the box, you get a very nice uh, set of OEM style hoses with appropriate connectors. The AOS bracket, zip ties, a cutting template for your engine cover, the fancy AOS itself, and a really nice gloss printed copy of the install instructions. IAG has a great install video, so I'll try to be quick with the install portion of this, commenting on the hard parts and what wasn't included in the instructions. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the engine cover, eight millimeter socket to remove the intake clamps before disconnecting the sensor and pulling the intake off. The directions tell you step-by-step step which hose to disconnect and how, but you really need to spend time verifying which one you're disconnecting. And also at, at 61,000 miles on my truck, everything was stuck on pretty solid especially the oil filler neck. Ah, oh, man. Once I got all of the old hoses off, I could install the new filler neck, which has an extra barb for the PCV oil to return right back into the valve cover. I also installed the new barb for the passenger side valve cover before installing the mount onto the AOS itself. There is a certain range that will actually fit underneath the hood. You can't put it up so high. So I, I just ended up putting it right in the middle. Uh, definitely don't put it too low, otherwise you can't bleed the coolant. Prepping the air oil separator, I added the hoses and removed the bolt and nut from the bracket and ground on the vehicle. Then I installed the AOS and prepped to remove the coolant hose from the block. The only reason that the AOS allows you to recirculate the crankcase ventilation oil is because it has hot coolant running through it that is supposed to quote, eliminate or, or reduce condensation from mixing with the oil. I clamped off the hose, slid back the barb clamp and popped it off the block. The coolant fountain was not shown in the IAG video or the paper instructions, so I didn't expect it or have the turbo inlets covered. Uh, I found that you need to use both hands to remove one hose while immediately installing the AOS hose. Then you can run the old hose to the other AOS hose. Uh, it took me about half an hour to do all of this because the clamp on the new AOS hose was, it was turned away from me and I couldn't get it back around easily due to the tight space and I didn't want to lose more coolant and have it spray everywhere. Uh, this can all be avoided by just verifying that the clamp is oriented properly towards you before swapping out the hoses so that the new hose that goes on the barb have the clamp pointed towards you. Once it was fixed, I correctly routed the exit hose, zip tied it, and went about installing the PCV hoses zip tying along the way. This little sensor on the driver's side needs to be swapped over to the new hose. So I popped it off with a little flathead screwdriver and installed it with the plug port pointed to the rear of the engine bay. And then I plugged in the wiring extension on both sides. Since the new oil filler neck has an extra inlet, you need to cut out a portion of the engine cover. I used a hole saw and a box cutter to cut it out. I couldn't get the engine cover to fit properly, so I, I played around with rerouting the hoses and I finally got it to fit. Then I reinstalled the intake and started her up. About a thousand miles into having the AOS on the truck, I noticed some nasty pink milkshake coming out of the AOS. I figured that it may be some air in the lines and I was supposed to flush the coolant anyway, so I bought a vacuum flush kit, drained the coolant, hooked everything up and did a drain and fill three times. Since the drain valve only releases coolant in the radiator, uh, I couldn't find a better way to do this and it, it's super time consuming since you have to run the car between each drain and fill. 
You are technically supposed to swap to water first, so you know that you've actually gotten all of the cool, old coolant out, um, and then you put new coolant in after that. I, I can't even imagine how many day, like days that would take me to do. Anyway, a couple thousand miles later, I found this and this. Googling the issue, I found a Subaru forum that said the reason this was happening was because I did not bleed the coolant on the air oil separator itself. This was a huge surprise to me because neither the instructions nor the video from AIG tell you to do this. I found WRX instructions, which do clearly include the requirement to bleed the AOS, and they tell you how to do it. Uh, I used an eighth inch Allen key on the screw while the truck was running, which was super hard to reach and actually loosen, but once it was loose, there was about five seconds of air release before coolant actually began draining out. Uh, I tightened it back up and cleaned everything up, including the filler neck. All right, so final thoughts are that you gotta do something about the blow-by. I swapped my plugs after 15,000 miles and the total vehicle mileage was 60,000 miles. I found a hell of carbon buildup inside the cylinders and this is compared to my cylinders at 15,000 miles. I asked a trusted friend and he said to check my tune, check my spark plug gap, and to buy a catch can. I ended up going goose tuned uh, and I gapped to his recommendation which was way different from what I was running. I was running stock gap on one step colder plugs with the cob off the shelf uh, stage 2 map when the gap actually needed to be much smaller. After tuning I wanted to add a catch can but became impressed reading about the IAG AOS. I did not read that it was not good in cold climates and obviously I didn't know about the, uh, the coolant bleeder screw. This item is seriously scary. Literally the only aftermarket part that I put on my truck that I'm afraid will destroy my engine. I did change uh, the oil and I didn't see any signs of water in the oil that I drained but I did find out another negative from the install which is that the, the new filler neck is really slow to take oil so you have to be careful that it doesn't overflow. I'd like to take credit for messing this up but I, I definitely followed the directions. I guess it, it's still my fault for not doing more research and learning about both the bleeder screw and the dozens of people who reported water in their oil despite you know bleeding the coolant properly. This thing is just dangerous and uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna do a proper flush on the engine oil and keep an eye out for more water but if this does persist then I'm just gonna have to throw my $500 in the trash because it, it's not worth messing anything up. Uh, and the engine has already started tripping out on me before any of this even happened, before I bought this. The cam phasers will definitely need to happen sometime this year. I'm just slow rolling it because I hope I can save enough money to, uh, to do something wild instead. But anywho, that's all I got. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.